So in today's demo, I'm going to be talking about what's called an imprimatura. Um, an imprimatura uh, in Italian means um, in the first. This is a layer that's not necessarily going to count as your first drawing layer of your painting. What you're going to be doing is you're going to be laying down a tone or stained uh, ground prior to actually putting those drawing layers on top. Um, I'll get into some of the ways that you can actually draw into an imprimatura, but the really the, the purpose of this is to kind of think of a, a value scale. Um, if you were starting with white and you're reaching all the way to your dark, so I have a white surface and I'm coming in with toned paint and I'm drawing into it, value-wise, I would have to reach really, really far and achieve a lot of values before I would be able to get to pure black. Um, the Imprimatura, on the other hand, starts you in the middle of the grayscale and you only have to reach uh, from the middle to the two ends. So in a lot of ways, it's kind of starting you in the middle of your value. Uh, for some painters, uh, the Imprimatura uh, makes it easier for them to be able to kind of navigate value when, when actually working. Now, the idea here is to have a paint that is typically neutral. So Imprimaturas are gonna be uh, dead greens, like a green earth, um, a burnt sienna, burnt umber, raw umber, which are browns. Um, or a gray, Davies gray, blue black, um, Payne's gray, or something like that. Um, or a mixed gray for that matter. And then Gamblin also sells grays that you can actually buy and put down. So we're gonna start with the tone ground. I have two paints here. I have a uh, quinacridone uh, gold brown, which is a really high key burnt sienna. And then I have alizarin crimson, which is actually made with quinacridone uh, right here. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be laying in uh, the tone quinacridone on this side, and then I'm going to bring the alizarin crimson back into it this side. Now, typically, you wouldn't be doing that. I just want to show you how you can actually make a transition in the in the uh, imprimatura. Um, but if I was just laying down a ground, um, I would uh, just lay down one paint, which would probably be this quinacridone gold, gold brown. I like the fieriness that comes out with the reds that are gonna come through. Um, if you're gonna put a Grisaira dead palette on it, you're gonna have this wonderful kind of screaming red coming through um, the neutral. Uh, now the paints uh, on their own are too uh, thick. As you can see, they're, they're stiff. Uh, paints out of the tube are not very workable. So this process is gonna require us to um, have a really, really thinned out paint. We want this layer to dry relatively quickly. I'm going to be mixing in a lot of this Galkid into it. And Galkid is a painting medium. I think you guys are going to be working with Gal uh, Gamblin Light or Galkid Light, uh, which is a, a more fluid version of this. Um, the, one, the one thing I like about it for the Imprimatura is um, it has a certain amount of fluidity, um, but it's going to dry pretty quick. You want this layer to dry no longer than a day before you want to be working back into it. Now that doesn't mean that when the layer isn't wet that you can't work into it, uh, but but majority of people are going to either put a drawing down under the white surface, put the imprimatura on top, or they're going to put the imprimatura down, and then they're going to put the drawing on top, uh, typically with a with a pencil like like this. Okay, so I can draw into this onto it and put the imprimatura over uh, and sealing in the drawing. Depending on the medium, uh, it could wash away, so there's always a risk of that. Now, I'm gonna be mixing a little bit of um, distilled turpentine into this just to make it uh, dry a, a little tiny bit quicker. It doesn't affect the drying time that much, um, but what it's gonna do is it, the, the galkit is gonna give me a kind of slippery surface when it dries, the distilled turpentine is going to cut that and it's going to make it a little bit easier for me to draw onto the Imprimatura. Um, so I'm going to mix those two together and I'm going to mix them directly into the paint. Now the brush that I'm going to use for this is going to be uh, a large bristle brush. Um, I use this brush only for Imprimaturas. Um, and like I said, it has to be big enough because you just wanna move on. You don't wanna have to spend a lot of time on this. Because this layer is gonna be painted over, uh, you're just looking for a consistent layer. <laughs> you know, you're not looking for uh, aesthetic in this layer. The only way that that would be an issue is if the, um, the, the overpainting, if, if you're gonna put a dead palette or a grisaille painting on top of it or a bestier, 
uh, that that would be the imprimatur would be coming through or showing uh, and not completely uh, covered up. Okay, so I'm going to use this brush. Um, I'm going to start really quick. And I'm going to mix together my um, my Galkid regular. Um, I'm going to put um, basically three parts of the Galkid and one small part of the uh, paint thinner. I don't want a lot. Okay, so this is just enough to cut it. Um, I don't need a massive amount of uh, paint thinner in here. Uh, for one, it smells like hell. It gives me a headache. <laughs> um, it's just gonna give a little bit of um, tooth to the Imprimatura and give it a little bit more flow. Okay, so I'm just gonna thoroughly mix these together and I'm mixing this in a baking shot glass um, for, for measurements. Uh, I'm blending with a chopstick because they're free. Um, and they're great blenders, by the way. So I'm gonna take this and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour it right onto my palette and I'm gonna keep it right on the side here so that I can pour more out if I need it. So I'm just gonna pull the paint into the medium and I'm just gonna use the brush to get the flow. Like I said, you want it consistent, but it's not terribly important that it's pretty. Um, it's just a tone or a color that you're putting down. And I can add a little bit more. Now, the more of this um, solution that you're gonna add, the more uh, the white is gonna come through on the surface. And you can see, as I start to lay it down, um, how fast uh, the coverage is that you can get, okay? said you could do this with a rag but you want to be kind of careful uh, that the um, dust from the rag does not get into the painting surface. Okay. I don't know if you like the smell of turpentine but it's pretty intense. Like I said you can see how quick I can move this around. Now some people like to uh, also tone the edges or the sides over here. I don't really care that much. Um, usually my pieces are um, covered up in a later layer anyway, so. Now, like I said, I'm going to come back here so you can kind of see that you can actually pull out a gradation. You can blend two paints together if you would want to. Um, you can directly draw into it while it's wet, as you can see. Um, I'm going to wipe that out. Uh, we'll just leave it go for now. Just wipe it this way. You can see that the, um, the pencil actually blends the more you scrub it, but that first layer of kind of laying it on, it's not that much of a problem. Graphite tends to stay better in an imprimatura than something like um, uh, vine charcoal or charcoal. Um, now I'm going to mix the red in and I'm going to start pouring the red into the medium into the red. And I'm just going to show you how I'm going to kind of pull that gradation over. So I'm going to start up here. I'm going to start laying in this red. Like I said, this would be kind of useful um, if you were doing a landscape or something where you just needed a gradation built into it, it's a way of kind of achieving that gradation early in the painting without having to paint it later. later. Um, like I said, typically you're just going to go for um, one color. Now what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to show you something. When pulling off a gradation, um, what you want to do is you want to do this, what's called um, hatching and cross hatching. Um, so as I'm going to carry this red into this, um, this brown, I'm going to slowly go into a kind of herringbone uh, method and I'm going to walk one into the other. And I can just keep doing that over and over. It's a lot easier when, when you're standing upright to do it. Um, 
but you can see I could just keep walking that way or into the other. So this could be a dark gradation into a light. It could be one extreme color into another, like a yellow into a green or a blue. Um, it could be a gray into a color, um, but not that important. The importance here is actually getting down the tone um, and putting that down. So you can see that you get the coverage pretty quick, but it does require you to have the liquid in here. Now, the last thing that I wanna show is, um, the cool thing is, is if you wanted to work back into this, like I said, you can draw into the Imprimatura like this and then let it dry like that. But you can also come in with um, a towel and you could begin to pull light out of the piece. So say you were making a bottle or something like that. Okay, and then I could come back and put the highlight in. And I could put the charcoal in. And then I could start to kind of work the gradation back into the bottle. Okay, um, I'm gonna get rid of this because I just want my ground. <laughs> but you can see uh, how light can actually be pulled out of the surface that way. Um, so this is gonna dry in probably, probably a day, something like that. Now the, the paint thinner is going to um, evaporate out of it, um, which isn't gonna totally contribute to the drawing, but it's just gonna give it that little tackiness for the drawing. Um, you wanna be careful like in areas like this where you have a lot of real oily, uh, heavier paint that you kind of knock that down because that can actually slow down the drawing quite a bit. So you just wanna make sure that that's pretty consistent. Um, And then, like I said, uh, one day and you're ready to go. Um, for this particular piece, I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna come back in with a uh, graphite um, pencil like this once it's dry and then I'm gonna draw in. And then uh, from there, uh, just paint directly my, my next layer on top of this, which could be a bish deer. Um, it could be a grisaille painting or a dead palette or it could just be a direct painting or a full colored palette, a full chromatic palette. Um, one more thing I'm gonna do is just gonna wipe this down just to bring out a little bit of the white in there. It's just a little bit dark for my taste. So now it's a little bit lighter. I can see my pencil marks a little bit better. Okay, well, thank you.